joining me today. We're going to be discussing defensiveness, which I think uh, I have a doctorate in defensiveness. We're talking about growing spiritually, growing closer to the Lord. How do we grow closer to the Lord? And I'm tempted to give you all of the scriptural knowledge that I have in the Bible and how to study the Bible and how to pray. But the problem is that most people know more theology than they actually put into practice. So we're going to be talking about practical things. How can I practically grow in the Lord? Defensiveness is a big issue. Defensiveness is one of those issues that is so massive that it destroys intimacy in marriage. It destroys uh, intimacy in relationships, closeness of any kind. It keeps you from growing up. It keeps you perpetually immature. I will be forever immature unless I deal with the area of defensiveness. Defensiveness is an unwillingness to assume responsibility. In other words, I can never say, it's me. I've got to say, it's somebody else. The job that was poorly done, that somebody else did that. The fact that I left early, that's not my fault. The fact that I arrived late, that's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's never my fault. That defensiveness will keep me from assuming responsibility, and responsibility produces growth, and defensiveness destroys it. So going back to the Garden of Eden, we have gotten our defensiveness from an original source. His name was Adam, and her name was Eve. So we can trace it right back. So let's start the blame game where it started. The blame game started in the Garden of Eden when God says, don't eat of that tree. And man didn't uh, stop his wife from eating, and she did. So whenever God comes, he does not blame the woman, but he blames the man. So in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that he says to the man, you know, uh, what's the problem here? What's going on here? And the man said, it's the woman. <laughs> The defensive blame game has started. I think the masters of the blame game are politicians. Maybe after that, Christians. It's never our fault. The devil did it to me. It was not my fault. If you're a politician, it's always somebody else's fault, whoever your predecessor was, uh, whatever the circumstances are. It's never your fault. It would be great to be a politician. You never have to assume responsibility. Uh, we had one president who reversed that curse, and his name was Harry Truman, and he had a sign on his desk that said, The buck stops here. In other words, you got a problem with something? It's me. If something's wrong in the marriage, men assume the responsibility. If you're the head, if there's something wrong in the army, general, you're the problem. If there's something wrong in the corporation, president, you're the problem. Whatever it is, if you assume the responsibility, then you can change it. If you don't assume the responsibility, you can never change anything and you will never grow. I think it's because we've been injured in the past, so I don't want to be injured again, so I'm going to never allow myself. So the man said, it's the woman. And then the woman said, it's the devil. So we then keep it running in circles, this cyclical, this cyclical blame game of it's never my problem, it's somebody else's problem. Why don't we say, it's me? I'm the one. I'm sorry. You know what? That is so liberating because then you can do something about it if you're the one that is responsible. If you're not responsible, you know, you cannot change anything. So I think that there is biblical precedence to say if you want a healthy life, a Christian life, a marriage life, a leadership life, no matter what your life is, learn to assume the responsibility and say it's me. Well, I don't make more money. Well, it's the economy. <laughs> well, I don't have a good job. Well, it's because they didn't promote me. Why don't you assume responsibility? Why don't we say it's me? This is where the problem started, and this is where the problem is going to be solved. I, I know that because it was a major issue in my life, a massive issue in my life, and I had to deal with it one day because my administrator said, Larry, you're not teachable. <laughs> By the way, unteachable people are always defensive because they, they're always right, so how could they be teachable? And when he pointed his finger in my face and said, Larry, you're, you never are willing to admit mistakes. And I had to personally thank him and say, you're right. You are totally right. I've been blaming you. I should be assuming the responsibility. And I said, there's something changed on that day. Something snapped and something broke that allowed my spiritual growth literally to exponentially rise. I'm telling you, it will work. If you begin to assume responsibility and say, it's me, I'm the problem, your life is going to be transformed. You're going to grow more spiritually than you can imagine. I want to remind you of the book. I want to remind you of the book, Teleos Man. I, I tell you, it's good stuff. You've heard me say it for the last how many sessions. 
uh, eight sessions prior to this one. It is a powerful book. The Teleos Man, not only for you, you need to give it to everybody. And by the way, women will love it too. KingdomGlobal.com. Order it online.